Hey guys, welcome to No Code Engineer. In this lesson, we'll see how to build a function in which you can add something from the repeating group. Uh, for example, you can make a, you can add products, or you can add people from a list of people in the repeating group. For this lesson, we're gonna take an example of an app in which uh, we can add people from a list of people. So we're gonna make a team by selecting players uh, from a list. So that's what we're gonna do and uh, let's get started. First, I would like to change the background of my page. All right, better. Now, first thing we'll need is a repeating group. Right here. And text boxes. And one more text box. Right there, that fits perfectly. Size a bit. Size. All right. Actually, let's copy paste this over here. Right here, I can say my team. So here in this repeating group, we're gonna have a list of players from the database, and we're gonna select some players to make our team. Let's name it my my soccer team. And empty options. Pick center say 1.2 and center fix vertical also let's give it a background style let's say flat color and a border of 36 that's it delete this and let's have the same style options here instead instead of soccer team let's say players and let's have a background color a different color for the uh, soccer team let's say green and then let's change the color white that's it and now in this repeating group we're gonna see a list of players taken from the database let us go back to the database and see the users that we have here the app data you can see we have some users and I'm gonna use these users to display on the player list. First of all, let's give it a different name, repeating group player list. And the type of content, let's set it to user. And the data source, we do a search for users. That's it. Now, remember that uh, since we are sourcing the players from the user database, we're also going to see our, our own self, our name, email, etc. on this uh, repeating group. So for that, let's add a filter here. Let's go to more and filter down somewhere here. And let's add a new constraint. And here we'll say unique ID is not equal to this sign means not equal to not equal to current users unique id so now we're not gonna see our own self in this repeating group and the separator let's make it solid and or maybe none but we'll do that later all right First thing we'll need is a name, current users, first name, and current users, last name. The name field here. All right. Since there's gonna be a scroll bar here, 
to scroll the list. Uh, since our repeating group is set to uh, vertical scrolling, of course you can have any type. I mean, if you have a full list, then you're not gonna see the scroll bar, but the full list will occupy the entire page. So that's why I'm gonna keep the vertical scrolling, but later in the video, I'm gonna show you how to uh, make it look much better because I, I personally don't like uh, the way the scroll looks inside a bubble. So I'm gonna show you a way to hide it but later on, first, let's uh, make our elements in the repeating group. So that's why let's leave some space here um, between the repeating group's edge and the text box here so that uh, we have some space for the uh, scroll bar. And let's reveal the style options. Background style, flat color. And let's give it a border, six. Bring it to center, find spacing 1.2, and center text vertical. All right, now let's copy paste it. You know, that's why I really like to work on one element at a time because for one element, we decided all the colors, the, the border, etc. we want. So when we copy paste it, we already have those uh, design properties in this new element. So we don't have to do that again. This, uh, this text box is going to show the current cells, current cell users email. I want to see the person's email. That's it. And finally, let's have a picture of the person. That's it. Now this picture will have a dynamic data for this picture and it will be current cells users profile picture. And let's reveal the style options here and give it a border of roundness six. That's it. And here, since we see some empty spaces, let's reduce the size of our repeating group. All right, looks much better. Now, let's have a checkbox to check the players that will go in our team. Checkbox here. Well, let's play. Yeah, on the name, why not? Double click on it. And let's an empty label. Reset status would be unchecked. Everything else the same. And let's place it some here on the edge. All right. Now that we have everything inside, uh, let's get rid of these lines in between. It's a predator, make it none. And repeating group has a fixed width. <laughs> Good. Now let's copy and paste this repeating group and place it right next to it. Here we go. and select all the elements here and group them all inside one group a bit more bigger than the elements that are inside we have some space to move this group and let's arrange it horizontally that's it now for this this repeating group here for my soccer team, we're not going to source the data from the database because the data here will come from our check marks. All the users that we check are going to come here and we're going to do that right now. Let's get rid of this checkbox here. 
we don't need that here so when the person checks this check checkbox here this user should appear on this list here so let's give that command in the workflow section because when you double click on it you cannot do anything here you know you don't have the uh, start edit workflow option here so so that's why let's go to the workflow here and add an action at an event so that event would be an element and input value is changed so when input value is changed something should happen and that input is a checkbox yes because actually because we already we only have uh, one input element on our page that's why it's by default in this checkbox anyway so when checkbox value is changed you can see that here when checkbox value is changed and only when this checkbox is checked so we're gonna have two events here when this checkbox is checked and this, when this checkbox is not checked so first let's deal with this only when this checkbox is checked we should be able to assign a state a custom state what do elements action set state here let's define a new variable 